this is Dr. Kavita Singh, Associate Professor in Department of Civil Engineering in Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. So today we are going to discuss a topic called as Computational Analysis Methods. So I hope you remember in the previous lecture we have discussed about the visual analysis methods and different types of visual analysis methods, overlay methods, buffering and uh, that all we have discussed with the vector data, right? We, when we are talking about visual analysis methods, maybe we are talking about the spatial analysis. So we can do the spatial analysis only on the vector data. When we are using point line and polygon, that all we can do on the spatial data. So that all analysis we can do on the uh, vector data analysis. Now today uh, we are going to discuss about the computational analysis methods. So computational analysis methods means the data which we receive from satellites through aerial photographs which is in the form of the raster data which is in the form of the grid format. So that data how we can do the analysis. So that uh, rectification, analysis, buffering, mixing the layer and assigning the colors that all information how we can do that will be learned. We will learn today. So let us start with the topics uh, like uh, contents what we are going to discuss. So raster data analysis, single layer analysis, multiple layer analysis and raster buffer. So these all uh, the contents which will cover this uh, topic as computational analysis methods. So let us discuss about the raster data analysis. So first of all, what is raster data analysis? When you're talking about the computational analysis, computational analysis means computational analysis. We are talking about what we are talking about raster. Okay. So I hope you remember what is raster. We have a lot of times we have discussed about the raster. So raster data is the data which is uh, represents represents in the form of grids. Okay, which represents in the form of grids cells. So here raster data analysis is the based on the cells and the raster. So whenever we are talking about a raster data analysis or computational analysis, computational analysis is computer itself, the system itself will provide the data, all the DN numbers and the data it will convert to a digital format. So each data, each form of the image will be converted to a pixel. So this kind of pixel like this, when you talk about raster, so this pixel will be in this one. Okay. So this type of data we call it as raster data, raster or computational data. Okay. Computational data. So this computational data will help us to do the analysis of the raster data. And raster data analysis can be performed at the level of individual cells. So as it is having each data, each uh, cell is having a DN number, okay. So what is DN number? DN number is digital number, okay. DN number is digital number. So each number is having a digital number assigned to the cell. So it can perform the level of individual cells or group of cells or cells within the entire raster. So it can perform to an individual cell if you are assigning for a point. So if you are assigning a building, assigning a location, so it can be assigned to a single cell, individual cell. And later it can be assigned to the group of cells. When you are talking about the porous memory, it, it can be for the group of cells. So number of cells are uh, present over this area. So that group of cells comes under the uh, uh, raster data analysis or cells within an entire raster. So cells within an entire raster, when we are talking about the entire raster, so the entire raster will be having lot of cells based on the cells thematic wise, when you talk about this thematic maps, we can just reproduce with the help of this group of cells or cells within entire raster. So some raster data operations use a single raster, other use two or more raster. So some of the data operations can, they can use a single raster data or some data will be using two rasters. Suppose we have one map here, one map here, so the other map is here, okay. So they use it two raster data or one raster data. So this is map one, this is map two, right. Now single layer analysis. So when you are talking about single layer analysis in raster data, and raster data means uh, directly it is, to, it is related to the computational analysis. So in this, when you are talking about the single layer analysis, reclassifying or recoding a data set, reclassifying or recoding a data set 
commonly one of the first steps are undertaken during the raster analysis. So, what is reclassification and recoding? Reclassification and recoding means if you have this raster data, for example, if you have this raster data, when you're talking about raster data, so each data is having some numbers like 1, let us say 1 here, 1 here, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. So these are the DN numbers, the DN numbers the computer will be given. Okay. Computer data which the system has already allotted to the each pixel. Okay. Now what we have to do is reclassify. Now, if you want to reclassify it, what we can do is just we can try to convert this into okay. So you can just classify this into more parts, and you can assign the we can assign the classification to it. Okay, classification to it. So in the coming uh, slide will be more clear. Undertaken during the raster analysis, reclassification is basically the single layer. Process of assigning a new class. It is the process of assigning a new class or range value to the pixel in the data set based on their original values. So here if you see uh, we have this input layer and we have this reclassification classification raster. So this is the input raster. Input raster you can see here 456. We have different number here, different number. So all this number are reclassified here again. Okay, reclassified again. So after reclassification, you can see it is converted into 5, 5, 4, 4, 3, 3. So these numbers where you can see here 218, 218 is 3, 218 is 3. So uh, other numbers they have just reclassified into new numbers. It is provided as a DN numbers to this uh, cell. So this is the reclassification. Reclassification output we can say. So we assign a different number to the pixel. So that can be done with the help of this raster data. So this is called as single layer analysis. When we assign a single layer, when you assign an input file and then you reclassify into different DN numbers. So this is all called as DN numbers. DN numbers, when you reclassify into uh, different numbers, we call it as DN numbers. So this is single layer analysis. Now when we talk about multi-layer analysis, so what is multi-layer analysis? So a raster data set can be also be clipped to a similar vector here. So multi-layer analysis means you will be having different layers here, different layers here. So you will be having different kind of feature. So here I may say this is a building, okay, building. I may say this is a water body okay this is a water body so this water body so this is a building this is a water body and you'll be having a forest area here or let us say agriculture okay this is a agriculture so what we can do is if you have a vector layer vector layer boundary vector layer boundary you can just for example this is your vector layer boundary. So this vector layer boundary is assigned just overlaid on this map like this. We just overlay on this and just we run the clip process. Run the clip process. So once you run the clip process what happens? It will cut the multi layers. So it will cut this uh, building, it will cut the water body, it will cut the agriculture part. So multi layer analysis we can do. So uh, by using the vector layer polygon, so the raster clip process results in a single raster that is identical to the input raster but shares the extent of polygon clip layer, shares the extent of polygon clip layer. For example, here you see uh, this is the image what we are talking about. So this is your input file, input file and this is your output file. And this is your vector boundary. So vector boundary. Now what you are going to do is we are just uh, assigning shifting this or overlaying overlaying 
on this input file okay once you overlay on this input file then finally what happens you can just clip out this area this much area we can just overlay and we can just clip out this area so that becomes the last layer so this is how it has clipped out you can see here uh, this data is removed from this data is removed from this you can see here this 4 3 5 this all data the same vector layer is removed from this layer so this is your output file now. okay output file now output file okay now uh, raster overlays are relatively simple compared to their vector counterparts and require much less computational power so this is how we can do we can perform the multi layer analysis multi layer if you see we have the dn numbers here dn numbers dn numbers 5 3 2 3 4 so these are all different numbers these are all different layers which the layers is overlaid on this and finally the output file we could get this as an output file so this is clipping a raster to a vector polygon layer okay now a raster buffer so what is buffer i hope you uh, remember so when we, uh, we were discussing in the vector data analysis that time uh, when you are using a point okay point so point buffer if i want to create so this is a point so if i want to create a buffer around this so this buffer will be 10 kilometers buffer okay now same thing if i want to create for a line so this is a my line so if i want to create a buffer around this so buffer will be created like this so this is around 5 kilometers buffer okay 5 kilometer buffer like that only for polygon i have uh, just assigned for the 10 kilometers buffer okay 10 kilometers buffer so around this polygon this buffer uh, zone will be created so like this uh, when we're talking about the raster buffer so raster buffer deals with the as you know it deals with the uh, pixels so raster buffer will be differently displayed here so how we can display the raster buffer so this is our image okay this is our image we have a raster here okay this is our image this is the raster now if you want to just do the buffering so suppose this is the cell to be buffered okay this is the cell to be buffered so around this cell around the cell the uh, buffering will be suppose 5 kilometer buffer i want so i will run the process run the process in the software okay run the process in the software so what happens it will create a zone around this so this zone will be created here zone will be created this zone will be created so buffer will be covering the pixels around the one cell so this is the individual cell individual cell so around the individual cell so uh, the area will be covered as a 5 kilometers buffer okay so uh, centering a grid or distance value from the center of the target cell to the center of the neighborhood neighboring cell so this is how this is suppose this is the target cell or this is the target cell around this the buffer will be created like this okay so then reclassifying those distances such as uh, such that a uh, one represents those cells composing the original target so a2 represents those cells within the user defined buffer area and 0 represents those cells outside the target of the buffer area so here uh, when you are talking about this uh, buffer zone so this is how it represents now when you are talking about the buffer zone suppose this is your uh, target cell okay here is your target cell now uh, as it is mentioned here so reclassifying the distances such as one represents those cell composing the original target so original target is represented here so this is one and this is one so this is the original target okay original target now if you see here uh, two represents those cells within the user defined buffer area now two will be buffer area so this is two this is two so this is the buffer area wherever you see 2 is the 2 is the buffer area and this is the original target as 1 ok now if you see here 0 represents those cells outside of the target of the buffer area 
So our zero here, zero here. So this is our outside of the target. So this is not under the not under the buffer area. Okay. Now see here, this is our this red color is what? Red color is original target. Original target. Original target. And what is this yellow color? Yellow one is buffer area. So this is the buffer area. Now what does this represent? So same thing here. This is the original target and this is the buffer area. Now this leftover is 0. So these all are 0. All are 0. Okay. So 0 means this is not under the buffer area. So this process can be run uh, with the help of the raster data. So once you uh, assign the raster data, raster data is having already contains with the different DN numbers. So wherever the buffer area is provided, that will be highlighted as a one, one or any value which is chosen there. So once you choose that area, around that area, how many kilometers buffer you want, we have to run the process and you may get the uh, area of buffer. So this area is the buffer area. Okay, This distance is buffer distance. Buffer distance. Okay. Here also this distance is, you can see here, so this distance is the buffer distance, okay, buffer distance. So this is how it is done in the raster data. So in the previous lectures you have seen in the for the vector data, vector data in uh, like point we use, line we use, polygon we use, so there is no kind of grid sense uh, as it is represented in point line, point one. So buffer zone is just uh, around the point line and polygon here because the data it is in the raster format because the data it is in the grid formats so it will just cover the grids okay center point it will cover around the grids it will cover here also around the grids it will cover so this is how the raster data will be uh, just represented so the mathematical raster overlay is the most common overlay method so it is mathematically overlaid and it's a very common method so the number within the aligned cells of the input grid scan undergo any unuser specified mathematical transformations okay so following the calculations and output raster is produced that contains a new value of uh, each cell now see here here we have input 1 this is input 1 and this is input 2 input 2 so input 1 and input 2 if you just combine this uh, overlay both the layers, both the layers, like if you see input 1, 1, 3, 3, 2, 2, 4, 1, 1, 3. Here you have 10, 11, 11, 10, 12, 12, 11, 14, 12. Now, once you combine these two, once it is joined here, now you can see 10 plus 1. So, you just you have to combine it. So, what is the output here? This is the output. So, how the output will be 10 plus 1, 11, 11. Now you have 3 plus 11, 14. Now 11 plus 3, you have 14. 2 plus 10, you have 12. Uh, next, you have uh, 12 plus 2, you have 14. And 12 plus 4, you have 14 again. Now 1 plus uh, 11 is 12. 1 plus 14 is 15. 1 plus 3, uh, 12 is 3 plus 12 is 15. So, this is the final output. Final output okay so just combining the two layers in the when you talk about this buffering combining the two layers two input raster layers overlay in the produce the output raster with the summed cells together so this is how we just convert this uh, data into the we merge the information we just merge two types of cells together two types of raster data together to get the output file like this okay so merging these two data we can just get the output file like this so uh, this is what about the uh, buffer zone and uh, about this input file when we can just input and get a layer like this. So, this is uh, raster buffer 
and this is the input file where you can see the output when you merge to the two types of data. So two types of data is having two different DNA numbers. So uh, for example, here it has two different DNA numbers. We have different DN numbers. So these different DN numbers are now combined together. So these are combined together now. Combined together. So we can say merged. We can say it is merged. So the data is merged to get an output of this kind of layer. This is how we do the computational analysis methods. So we are not going to change any kind of uh, uh, information, just we are going to uh, merge or do the analysis methods based on the grid cells only. So it's a mathematical, uh, you can see a mathematical raster overlay where you can just overlay the data and get the numbers uh, within the grids and undergo under specified mathematical transformations. So this can be done through this mathematical transformation mission by overlaying two types of maps on a one over the other last layers one over the other right so i hope you understood about this uh, computational analysis method so we are just going to do with the grid cells we are not going to do with the vector data here uh, last data directly whatever we receive from the satellite from the aerial photos or from the scan data just directly we try to merge the data we try to buffer the data we just pick a cell over there and we just run the process to get the buffer zone around it and we use a vector layer uh, just a boundary as a vector layer as a boundary to clip out the data so how much data if you want to remove from the raster layer just we just use it as a boundary over there okay so this is about the computational analysis methods we generally call it as cam so previous lecture we have discussed about the vam that is visual analysis method so this is vam and cam is very common in gis all the analysis processes can be done in this data okay so uh, these are the references uh, who are just getting more information about it so you can just refer this mng ready book for the finding out more content or you can just go through this links to get the more information about Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.